Welcome to a special edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Kansas City-based jazz saxophonist Adam Larson. He recently relocated to Kansas City from New York City and talked about the state of the world now that we are over two weeks into the coronavirus quarantine of March 2020. He opened up about how to support the arts and his overall perspective on this global pandemic and how it is affecting the human soul. Please enjoy. Thanks for taking a minute out today. It's kind of hey, no problem. special circumstances, so... Uh, I appreciate you taking a minute out. Now, this is going to be the, the, this will be a very centric interview about oh what has been going on for almost two and a half weeks, which is basically a complete drying up of the entire jazz scene in a live version. So, talk to me a little bit about you know kind of what you're doing these days. Your your thoughts maybe of you know now looking from New York to Kansas City, kind of things like that. Just kind of give me an idea of where you're at right now. Yeah, sure. Um, it's been pretty difficult for all freelancers, you know, as you can imagine. Um, most of the work that is scheduled through mid-May has um, pretty much been canceled. So financially, it's been pretty interesting. Um, all my guest artist stuff that was booked from March through mid-May is pretty much um, not going to happen. So I'm working to either reschedule that or get deposits uh, for as much of that as I can, because that's a pretty large portion of, you know, um, part of my income pie. But um you know, everybody's moving to online, so UMKC, where I teach a class once a week and then teach students, it's all online now. Um, it's pretty much unilateral um, across the, you know, uh, states for the most part. Um, so for for me, you know, I've, I've I already had a lot of Skype students in place outside of the university, so that's um, been kind of a godsend just because I know I can account, uh, I can count on some type of um, financial, you know, uh, picture uh, each month, but, um, yeah, I'm really glad I'm not in New York right now. Um, New York is, is, uh, getting hit the hardest for sure. And, yeah. um, you know, it's just, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. I read a pretty interesting, um, article by, uh, there was an interview of David Chang, who's a really famous restaurateur and entrepreneur in New York who opened up Mama Fuku, uh, milk bar, um, and another, um, couple of restaurants. And he was just saying that, you know, not in any hyperbolic way at all, but, you know, if something doesn't get figured out here, there there could no longer be a restaurant scene. Um, and the only people that would survive would be, you know, the big chains. And thinking about that in terms of music in Kansas City, you know, I just, uh, I, I don't know, I feel really anxious about all of that, you know, not least of which is just having, you know, mom and pop and, and great local businesses, you know, really affected by all this. So um, it's definitely a, a, a very ang- anxiety-ridden time and, um you know, I think the thing that people can do is, uh, you know, if, if you enjoy a certain artists' music or what they put out or, you know, and you've been streaming them or checking them out largely for free, now's the time to support if you can because some artists, like, that's all they really have if they're not on the road is their merch and their music. And so, yeah, it's a pretty difficult time for sure, but um, trying to, to figure out how to navigate it the best we can. I guess the one thing, too, that I want to know from you is once we do get to the other side of this and there are live gigs and things start coming back, what do you hope the audience brings with them that's new, that's revelatory, that makes them see things in a different way? Well, I mean, you know, I, I think it's um, I think it's pretty telling. Like, you know, Congress passes a stimulus bill and there's the funding for arts in there and you have certain um, political figures who are even saying, like, that's, dumb to allocate any money towards the arts and, you know, what good did that do? And it's like, well, everybody's inside right now watching, you know, Netflix or watching movies or, you know, looking at paintings or listening to music, like try to get through a quarantine without art, you know? So hopefully people, um, you know, I mean, certainly even in two and a half weeks, I'm just like a huge part of my life as I know it is missing. And that's not least of which is just interacting with other musicians. So I hope people come to shows that there's an even greater appreciation, you know, for, um, the arts uh, and, and live music and the experience of, of hearing and, uh, you know, live music. Um, not to say that there isn't already, but I'm just, I would be very surprised if, if and when we come out of this, that there isn't, you know, um, a resurgence of interest in, in the arts, so long as it is, you know, still uh, <laughs> plausible to, to have concerts and things. You know, that's the one thing I just don't, I don't know, the longer this goes on, the harder I, I, I uh, the more I, get, I guess I begin to question on, how feasible it's going to be that things are going to be up and running even remotely close to what they were before. 
So before we go here, I guess I just want to be more pointed about exactly what people can do out there that wants to contribute, whether it's PayPal, Venmo, just kind of be clear about what people can do for not only Kansas City, but for the collective of jazz artists around what exactly can they do. It's a lot of things. I mean, you know, a lot of musicians have their own merchandise, whether so it's books, their CDs, their master classes, and, um, you know, supporting it that way from the website is a, is a good thing to do. If you um, are able to support their music by buying their actual physical album, you know, that's uh, something that people can do. Bandcamp is a good platform because if you don't want physical or you want to pay more than um, what the price of, you know, somebody selling a CD for, you can you can uh, pledge whatever you want, um, and that goes to the artist. Um you know, people have been doing a lot of live streaming um, on Facebook and Instagram and so on and so forth. And um, if you if you feel so inclined to, you know, Venmo the artists that are, are performing, um, I'm very sure that that helps a lot of people um, who are solely dependent on the gig economy. Like I said, I have, um, you know, I have a built-in studio of, of students um, online that, that certainly helps me um, get through this. But a lot of my friends are solely just playing. So you can imagine that, the situation you're in is um, pretty intense. So I would say if there's a specific um, musician that you really enjoy their art, find out, you know, if they have gear, I mean, merch that you can uh, that you can buy or if there's a way to support them through a live stream or, you know, like you mentioned, Venmo, PayPal, this kind of thing. But beyond just the musicians, you know, thinking about Kansas City, you know, most of the venues that have music have some kind of, of food affiliated with it. You know, think about Corvino or Sava or, you know, um, Westport Coffee House or anything like that. The Blue Room, for instance, you know, I mean, they don't have food, but at the same time, you know, it's all the, the service industry. So I know Corvino and Sava are still doing, um, you know, curbside pickup and that kind of thing. And I think I can't help but think if you are able to support them, that in some way supports, you know, the musicians who rely on the opportunity to play at those venues um, when, when it's not, you know, during a pandemic. So, well, I've been interviewing a lot of people from around the country and getting different perspectives from everybody and where they're at. I think the resounding thing is that art is absolutely necessary and vital. And I think the other thing is this cloud of ambiguity. And I think the only thing that we can do is look on the other side. And I'm already thinking how great it's going to be to actually sit down in a seat to see something live. I know the last live show that I saw was probably one of the most unique live jazz shows I've ever seen. I saw Bill Frizzell at the Nelson, and that was wild. I've never seen anything like that live. So, and it was, yeah. it was the, 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 the cool thing about that show was at the very end, the singer got up and said, we will overcome. And the entire crowd just started kind of slowly standing up. And I, realize now in retrospect how resoundingly uh, prophetic that was without anybody knowing anything was going to happen because that was well before the announcement that everything was going to be going into a quarantine mode. So I guess that's, yeah, so I guess that's my metaphor right now. Hey, you know, we can get to that point um, and, and come out of this, but I've been really, you know, I've been in shock like everybody else, but I think it's really important that I interview all of you musicians and get your perspective so at least you have an oasis away from this and that, you know, there's a way out. But I will tell you that in all of these years of doing jazz, I have never met a finer group of people than you guys. And if there is ever anybody that's equipped to overcome and to show people the way in a very magnanimous, unique way, it's you guys. So keep the faith and, uh, you know, just, just keep doing it, man. I appreciate it very much, Joe. Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in New York City, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Adam for opening up during this trying time for the planet. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, you can visit the neonjazz.blogspot.com. And please support the arts. During this time of isolation, we should know the value of art art, movies, TV, and music in our lives. It's vital, and you should support it. Until next time, enjoy all of the art, my friends. Neon Jazz.